Well, for us, um, I think out of the six years that we've been on the benefit focus platform, one year was passive, and we found that you know nobody fixed anything. If, if they were in the wrong program, they just stayed there because that was what they were used to. So we have an active enrollment for our non-union um, folks every year, and I mean, it's a lot of work, but we find that that forces them into the system to, number one, look at their personal profile, make sure their address is right, make sure all that information hasn't changed, and push them to try and make sure that they're in the right plan, you know, that the plan design for their family hasn't changed for them, that they might need to move somewhere else. So we do make it active for them. Um, our non-union teams, or, excuse me, our union teamsters, their plans are pretty much contractual, so we can't change that and enforce it. So they're pretty, it's one plan, it's pretty standard, so that we let them be passive if you know they want to, but we certainly encourage them to go in and at least check their personal information, but they don't usually do that. <laughs> Interestingly, of course, you have to apply your culture and everything mm -hmm. and, and your organization. Um, before I came and before we went to Benefit Focus, we had not had an active enrollment in at least a decade and probably more. And so then we had 100% enrollment, as I, I mentioned. So um, we just, as an organization, find it very hard to push an active enrollment every year. So this year, for 2016, we did kind of a passive active. There were pieces that if you went in and enrolled, they were active. We wanted you to look at your medical. Mm -hmm. We ended up getting about 40% of our folks um, going in voluntarily to the site, which was actually very good when you considered back in the days when we just did paper, only um, about 1,500 people would enroll a year. The people who had to have FSA or some other reason they had to go in. We, we two and a half times greater now that we're online. So you could argue that because we made it easier and more accessible, that more people are volunteering to do it. We would love to have an active each year. Um, I don't think my leadership's going to support that, yeah. but <laughs> but you know that does matter what what you do. But but I think it's all our goals to get folks into the system. We want them to look at their beneficiaries, and we want them yeah. to make the right decisions and not just to go on kind of autopilot. No, for us though, and taking on that active is again, it's it's a lot of work because we maybe get about. By the time our two-week open enrollment period's over with, maybe 58% have gone on this year. And it, we expected it to be a whole lot more. So then that's a push for us of running a report. One of our categories are locations. So we pull everybody's location and send emails out to those store managers saying, here's your team that hasn't logged in, and you're one of them. And if we, you don't log in, <laughs> we're going to hunt you down. So <laughs> please don't make me call your, your supervisor. And so that helped because we had all those other feelers out there to, to help us along. But again, active enrollment doesn't mean 100% is going in either, and so we have to hunt them down. So, and I think as a carrier, 85% um, <laughs> of our groups are new in January, you know, and so we have thousands of groups renewing, and we're trying to get. All, and so it's obvious as a carrier, easier, easier work-wise. If mm -hmm. someone, you know, if we're doing, if we have a lot of groups that are doing passive enrollment, but as the products get more and more complicated, and as there's more employee anticipation, and employees opt in of certain things and opt out of certain things. I think overall a trend for the industry, you're going to see less and less passive enrollment. You just, you, you just won't simply be able to, you know, uh, even, even today with the products that are out there with a, you know, an FSA contribution, you have to definitely, you know, re-up that every single year. And, and as you said, when things change. Uh, so it, as on the carrier side, it's really up to us in order to get through open enrollment to continue to look for more automated processing and, and ways to get that enrollment through quicker, faster, and more accurately.